Pastor. <laughs> ok, qué bonito. It's so beautiful. Yay, hello everybody. How is everybody doing? Let's see, here we are in Arellano. A beautiful village in the middle of exactly nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> ok, so. De momento le tengo un pasito. Dos. Hola Patricia, ¿qué tal estás? Esa es española. <laughs> hello, hello. Ok, so, shall we start? Yes, let's do it. Ok, so, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Let's say hello. Oh, no, not there. Wait, here. Ah, it's too sunny. Oh, Spanish, we're blinded. Spanish sun. Spanish sun, hello. So, ok, let's get out of here. Let's go. Yeah. So, my name is Francisco. My name is Javier. And today we are going to be visiting a Roman villa that dates back to the first century after Christ. It's probably the oldest winery uh, that we have in Navarre, and one of the oldest ones in Spain, I would say. Yeah, and one of the best conserved Roman wineries in, in, in Europe, so, so excellent place. It's a very good place. So let's take a look, first of all, from the top. We're going to go down, yes? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, hola, everybody. So take a look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Roman winery. So, uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's go a little bit into history. Uh, Romanization came here around one century before Christ uh, to Navarre, where we are now. And the thing is that the most important city was Pamplona, uh, founded by jo Roman general Pompey, the one that founded Pompey in Italy. And the thing is that uh, little by little, people start. We have here our fields are very good for wine and olives. And if you're Roman, that's what you need, wine and olives. So here, people start moving by the first century after Christ, when this uh, space dates from, uh, people start coming over here to produce wine. Yes? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, this was a winery. See? Yeah, that's right. Well, we are uh, in, the, in the wine cellar. This uh, villa had different rooms uh, that uh, had different purposes in the winemaking process. Okay, one was the aging room. They didn't age the wine in oak barrels, but in, uh, with, with smoke. Then they had another room where they spiced the wine. They had the, the press room also for pressing the grapes. And this would be the wine cellar, the most important part of the winery, because here is where the wine was kept in these huge jars made of clay, these doliae in Latin, uh, that uh, the ones you can see are completely original. Uh, we know that uh, they had around 60 doliae here. Uh, we don't have them all, but still we have a really uh, interesting um, so part of it. One of the things that you have to understand that each one of these dolias, by the way, you spell it D-O-L-I-A-S, okay? Uh, no, A-E. E-S, sorry. Yeah, that, that. That's the plural in Latin, <laughs> the A-E. So doliae. Who's a smart ass? No, we, are, we are having here an <laughs> argument about Latin and, and okay, Spanish. Okay, 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 yeah. So it's Latin, so it's doliae. Doliae. Okay, so the thing is that all of these, uh, clay jars, let's put it that way, they would hold 700 liters of wine, okay, which is about 185 gallons of wine. Okay? Each one of them had this type of lids. All of this is original, which I think it's incredible. This is from the first century. 2,000 year old. 2000, that, much easier, 2,000 yeah. years old. And extremely well preserved, okay? So imagine if there were 60 of these in here, how much wine? I mean, this was a big production. E enough for me. I mean, 50,000 <laughs> 50, liters, uh, that's what I drink in a year, more or less. Yeah, but how many, I mean, was this for private use or was it for, to sell? Yeah, uh, definitely it was, uh, it, it was to sell, okay? They, they, they produce here, uh, of course, they, they would drink here, but uh, they would go to the weekly market in the, in the city to sell the wine, okay? So it's, not that different uh, to what we see today. Mm -hmm. 
Leslie says that she will take two bases of the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I'll take two of them. <laughs> okay, so uh, besides that, uh, in this, I mean, we have to remember that this is, it was a covered place, it was, a, it was just a storage house. And here, what you have in front, right there, that is an altar, okay? Let me see if this, you guys can see this well. I think, yeah, it comes out very well. Hello from Chicago, hi everybody, hi. So what is the issue with this? I mean, you have to understand how important all of this was uh, because inside of the wine cellar, we have a Roman altar, okay? So the gods of wine and everybody were prayed in here. So it was a very, very important thing. Right? So it was, I think it's kind of a funny thing to have an altar inside of a wine cellar. Yeah, in the Roman homes, uh, they had altars with little statues that represented gods, but not um, very big or powerful or almighty gods. They had these little uh, gods that were the protectors of the house, the protectors of the family, the protectors of the crops. And uh, as, as I was saying, you could find these altars in all the Roman homes. But what's important of this place is that the altar is located in the wine cellar. So that is telling us the importance of what they kept here. Wine was the, their most precious uh, treasure, okay? So that's why they had the, their gods to protect the wine. So I mean, it would be my biggest protection yeah, also. Yeah, it's, sure. like, I want, it's like heaven. So uh, one of the things that we need to remember is that uh, they used to have here red wine. No, so it was at least something similar to the red wine that we drink today. Although they would not, uh, okay, let's do it this way so you can see us a little bit. The thing is that the one that they had, it was not just normal wine because first of all, it was a, a little higher uh, in alcohol degrees. So they would mix it, uh, first they reduce it a little bit with water, okay? Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is one of the symbols that us, as Christians, we, we do when we uh, go to Mass, the priest mixes wine and water, and it comes from dives, okay? Because the wine was way too strong. Uh, besides that, the wine, uh, it was super strong, and they would, uh, how do you say? They would spice it, yeah. and they would mix it with spices, with, uh, if there were very special occasions, with honey, with, with, honey, with saffron, Mm -hmm. uh, with thyme, so it was super spiced, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah, different, different wine uh, to the, one, the wine we are used to drink nowadays, but uh, the essence is the same, you know, it's, it's pressed grape, fer fermented pressed grapes, so basically. It is your daily fruit that yeah, you have to right. take. Instead of an orange juice, you, you have a glass of wine, obvious. It's perfect, okay, so the thing is that by the third century, Mm -hmm. The winery itself fell down, or yeah, uh, in the late uh, 1200s, uh, maybe some of you know that the Iberian Peninsula was invaded by barbarian uh, armies coming from northern Europe, and uh, of course these uh, these uh, rural villas, these uh, uh, farms, these country houses were uh, defenseless uh, against this uh, invasion. So they, they suffered destructions. And in, in the year uh, 276, uh, we know that this, uh, this uh, farm was destroyed, maybe because of these uh, barbarian invasions. And the, the wine cellar was destroyed uh, partially. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, part of why we don't see all in perfect shape. But one of the great things is that First, the winery was constructed, and then the Roman villa came That's later, right. mm -hmm. okay? So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna welcome you inside of the house, because That's this is, right. it was the main entrance to the house, okay? So That's right, this is, this is the doorstep. This, so hopefully Here. we will not trip. <laughs> <laughs> and we were greeted by this, whoops, sorry. Okay. Hey. This uh, square room, that let me show you first how it looked, okay? It's called Peristilo. Okay, so this is how it looked. And this is what it is, okay? So the thing is that here what we had, it was a, like a cloister, 
okay? That it was covered with a, with a roof that all the water from the rain would drop inside, inside of that pool that you see in there, okay? And this cloister would connect all the rooms that were located around it, okay? So that is what we have in here, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, so it's like a, like a central patio, like a central yard, as Fran was saying, with, with water, with some plants, with shade because of the roof. So it was like a cloister, and it, it acted as a, as a place to, to um, welcome you when you enter the house, but also to uh, enjoy the shade, uh, the fresh water, uh, sit, relax, okay? So it was this central uh, patio that, well, that we can still find in, in for instance, in the Andalusian uh, houses. So maybe from the south of Spain, this tradition that we have of the patios, it mm -hmm. comes from yeah, sure. back here. Mm -hmm. okay? So as we were saying, this patio would connect with the different rooms as around the house. And here we find the first room in the house with a beautiful mosaic. This was a dormitory. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just want to make a little close up because I think the images, I mean, the mosaics are so extremely beautiful. I mean, look at that little bird. It's like gorgeous. So you have to think that all of these uh, mosaics, they were created as tapestries, like if they were blankets, okay? So they're super delicate. And when you see this size, okay, I'm gonna put one finger, so you see the size of each one of the stones. Look, I mean, they're much smaller than my nail. Right? They're super mega small. That means that somebody paid a lot of money because you have to have people cutting tiny little bits of stone. Okay, so that was an amazing, amazing thing. And this is how the dormitory would look. By the way, I love coming to this place because all of these pictures really puts you into the place. It really shows you how it looked and how it was, okay? So if you come to Navarre, Arellano, the Villa of the Muses, it is the place to come. So uh, right behind us, let me turn the camera around, is where we have a peristilo, okay? Right. The collecting water, okay, that, thank you. You are a very good tour guide, you know how to point. <laughs> and right in front of us, what we have is this underground cistern, okay? This was a pool to collect water, all right? Look how big it was. It was used for the family to drink, mm -hmm. but mostly also for the farm, for the animals, okay? That little gate or that little door, whoops, it was if you needed to go inside, all right? So it's, super well preserved, and I think it's incredible that we have this huge pool in here. Okay. Yeah, uh, something I think we forgot to tell you is that, that this uh, part uh, that we are showing you now, the, these bedrooms, this uh, cistern, uh, was built some centuries later, okay? It seems that after the destruction of the, um, of the winery, by the, by the barbarians, uh, uh, probably a nobleman or a rich man from the city uh, bought this place and decided to retire after. Uh, see, see, retire? Sorry, sorry. No, so if you just stay on this side, they can oh, hear you better. Oh, sorry. Um, decided to retire here. Uh, and I always uh, love to think uh, about the similarities between us, 21st century, and, and them. Uh, first, or in this case, fourth century. Uh, we all dream, or some of you maybe have done already, some of you um, have uh, done, have bought a, a house in the countryside in order to go there when you retire. So that's what this man did here. In the fourth century, he bought, he probably bought this uh, uh, partially destroyed winery and uh, restored it and built new parts, uh, which are the parts that we are seeing now, okay? These mosaics and, and these, these bedrooms and all that. So I think it's amazing. So people are asking, where are we? This is Arellano, this is Navarre, okay? Uh, remember that we are a Roman, 
well, we had a Romanized. Pre -Roman, Roman, Romanized. We were Romanized by the first century before Christ. So it is an amazing place that we have all of this beautiful Roman villa. Okay, so by the 400s, all of this was constructed. Okay, so the first part, the winery is from the 100. It has 2,000 years. This one only has, well, 1,700 years. Uh, so this is... This is new. New. <laughs> Brand new. So we have shown you... Okay, sorry. Great. All of that... All of those are different, were different dormitories, okay? And what we have here, which is the best preserved uh, mosaic, it is, or it was, the main room, the welcoming yeah, room. Yeah, or the dining room, yeah. Now, okay, once again, unfortunately, oh, I can zoom in. <laughs> yeah, let me see if my fingers are not too cold. See if I can just extend this. Look at that. It's so beautiful, so many details. It's like incredible. Alucinante, as Patricia <laughs> says, yes. Yeah, it's, it's really astonishing, uh, the level of detail they achieved. And as Fran said, the, the amount of money the owner paid to, to have this. This was luxury, okay? They, they copied the, the villas that uh, the emperors had in Rome and they were inspired by those, and uh, they recreated here those luxuries. And here, well, this would be the, the dining room. They would gather here in order to, to have lunch and dinner, as, as uh, probably all of you know uh, by watching the Roman movies. Uh, they didn't uh, sat uh, for lunch. They uh, lay down on a kind of uh, sofas or hammocks, and uh, they would eat. Um, Laying down. And Laying down, that's so, right. Once again, we have here one of those beautiful pictures that shows us how they would use it. So you have to think that back then, obviously they didn't have Netflix or <laughs> YouTube or Facebook like we do now. Uh, uh, they the okay, so the thing is that uh, they would gather to drink and especially to talk, okay? It was the art of talking, one of the most important things. Okay, so everybody would gather around here. The host will have dinners prepared. They will have all of these wines, different mixtures that we were saying. Okay, I'm going to, I love all of these mosaics and all of these tiles. We, look at that. Missing. Will the tiles that are missing will be restored? No, Tracy, they will not. That is one of the things that here in, uh, in Spain, there are different uh, restoration techniques, okay? And uh, in Spain, what they have opted in many other places is to put in value what is original. And if we're missing some parts, that's it. Mm, you have to figure it out. You have to imagine it, okay? That's why we have the recreation. Okay, let me show you the mosaic, how we think it was, but you totally see that it's not there. So, unfortunately, it's not in perfect shape. Darn it! Hmm. Yeah, because uh, all, all all this place was completely covered with uh, with ground, and well, it was uh, discovered by by a, 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 by a farmer. A, yeah, by a farmer. It was a matter of luck because this farmer was planting a, a vineyard, and he. Uh, We're talking 1800s, yeah, okay? 1800s, so it's yesterday so, in history. Yeah, 150 years ago, he was planting a vineyard and he found these colored stones. Oh my God, these, these stones, this, this is a kind of drawing, this is a face, this is a body. And they discovered this mosaic we are seeing now. And this mosaic gives name to the, to the villa, the mosaic of the muses, okay? Right. So the first part that was discovered, it was this beautiful mosaic of the muses, okay? The muses, they were the ones who helped uh, the arts, okay. Mm -hmm. The nine muses. The nine, I'm not going to pretend that I know it. I wrote them down because it's impossible to remember each one of them, but I'm gonna let them know each one of you, which one is they? So we have Calliope, who is the muse for eloquence and beauty, Cleo of history. Erato of poetry. Euterpe is the muse of music. Melpemone, tragedy. Talia, comedy. Polymnia, the holy music. 
Terpsichore, the dance, and Urania, the astronomy. Those are the nine muses mm -hmm. That's for right. the Romans. That's right. Just and and w why is this called a uh, museum? The mosaic you are seeing now, the room you see, uh, was called the museum. Why? Because it's where the muses are, okay? And here, the owner and his guests would uh, sit down and uh, listen to music played by some musician or read or, um, you know, represent some theater plays. And the word museum comes from muse. So if you go to a museum, remember that uh, the original museum is this, okay? The place where the muses are. Are gathered. And mm -hmm. this is, once again, how it would look. By the way, Joyce, thank you so much for sharing uh, the link to the Gobierno de Navarra, the mm -hmm. Govern of Navarre, uh, link to the muses, uh, the Villa of the Muses in Arellán. Okay, so this is where we need to find inspiration. I guess we all need to come into the center of this room and ask the muses mm -hmm. to right. inspire us. That's right. So uh, the thing is that as a good Roman villa, uh, we have uh, the wine-related uh, things. We have the leisure and the pleasure of living uh, in the Roman times when it was perfect. They would have all of these places to eat, to drink, to enjoy, to have celebrations. S slaves. Well, slaves, slaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're, I mean, come on, we are Roman people. We are not <laughs> slaves. Okay, so. <laughs> but also, now we're going to, OK, let us take you the last image from the inside, because we're going to go outside. Because outside, what we have is the religious, let's put it that way, That's right. part, the religious part of the Roman villa, okay, which was outside. So well, the, the building you see today was uh, built here in 2008. Okay? So 13 years ago, it was all uh, covered again and protected and, and made it visitable. So we have a very modern uh, facility in order to preserve the, the site. And whenever you come to Navarra, you have to check guiarte.com. Guiarte, Guiarte Navarra. Navarra. Darn, you told me That's twice. Company. It's Guiarte his company, Navarra. Guiarte Navarra. Uh, they are the ones who take care of this beautiful place. Also the castle of uh, Olite that we have already done with him. With me. So you check our YouTube channel, travelingsteps.es, and you will see the visit we did with him with uh, Palace of Olite. Uh, also, he takes care of a lot of wineries. I'm trying to convince him uh, to take me to take sure. all of us to one winery. The this, ones is, that, this is a Roman winery. Well, <laughs> one with wine with that wine. we can okay, taste. Okay. So okay. hopefully uh, that will be great. Okay. okay. So Perfect. let's come outside. Let's go outside. And let's go, well, first we're greeted as we come outside. We're Roman, so we have a beautiful olive tree. Okay. That's right. An ancient, very ancient yeah, olive tree. This tree is around 200 years old, something like that. So. And we have, oh, look at the light, que bonita. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I yeah, was the, tripped. All the cypress trees. All the cypress trees that they were. are also very Roman. Very Roman. And all the way up there at the back, let me see if I can zoom in. We still have wine. Okay, all of those are vineyards. So mm -hmm. here. Yeah, the, the landscape hasn't changed much in 2000 years. We still have the same crops. Yeah, we, have, we still have vineyards, olive trees, cereal fields, fruit trees, and uh, this area is really, really fertile. So that's why the Romans uh, chose this place as, uh, to, to, to build a farm and, and a winery. And still today, it's, it's almost the same. Well, we know that Romans, they were kind of clever people and they knew how to uh, <laughs> take care of themselves. So look at that beautiful sight. Well, we'll go a little, we'll end up up there. But we want to show you this place, which is the Tauro Bolio. What on earth is this? Okay, Tauro, what does it mean? Toro. Bull. It's a bull. So here we have the bulls. Okay, sorry for the wind, but it's kind of a windy. So uh, you have to think that this place, okay, was uh, dedicated to Cibeles, okay, okay. the goddess Cibeles, 
and her son dash lover Atis. Okay. Right. Yeah, these, these were gods that came from the Middle East. Uh, you know, the Roman Empire uh, was very big at the time, and from the Middle East came new divinities, new gods, and Thibeles and Atis were these new divinities. And here, uh, it seems that the owner of the place decided to build also a kind of church uh, to worship Thibeles and Atis. And in Christianism, we have the baptism with water, so here, in order to uh, welcome a new member of this uh, religion, what they did was to kill a bull with a dagger, uh, stab the bull, and, and pour the, the blood of the bull um, on top of the new baptized uh, member. Blech. It's disgusting, isn't it? But <laughs> what they, it's what they did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so they would place the bull. Look, they would, okay. they would place the bull here on top of the of the soil and there was a hole in the ground in which stood the the person or people who were going to be baptized okay they stabbed the bull and the the the, the, the blood would flow down and um, uh, yeah, kind of shower a... shower the 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 baptized it's kind so, of disgusting but yeah it, 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 was, it was a way it was so Susan yes is Tibel uh, Sibeles, uh, who is the goddess of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it was, you know, reconnecting, rebirth, the whole thing. That's right. See? So now we are going to kill a bull? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we're, uh, no. no. I'm a vegetarian, so I, I would You're never You're vegetarian? Do that. Yeah, I am. I didn't no. know that one. I am. I didn't know. Okay. I rec uh, recommend you. It's, it's very healthy. I know. Everybody says that it's very healthy, but not for me. <laughs> I love my steaks. <laughs> anyway. So we are going to be done. We just want to share with you. I know it's very windy, so we're going to be finishing in one minute. But I want to show you this panoramic in front of us because, as Javier is saying, all of this landscape has not changed in 2,000 years. So this is exactly what the Romans that came here used to watch. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Javier, for You're opening welcome. the door for us once again. He has opened the door just for us. So thank you very, very, very much. You're welcome. If you come to Navarre, check his castle. <laughs> well, not yours, but it's okay. Mine, mine. His castle, check over here because it's amazing. Uh, hopefully you have learned a little bit about the Roman uh, here in Navarre. Uh, you know that all of these videos are tip supporters. So if you want to share a tip, thank you very, very much. We have uh, left um, the tip jar in the text so everybody have a wonderful day let me show you all of that how beautiful it is i think this is so beautiful you're gonna have wine for breakfast good for you william <laughs> <laughs> janet thank you so much susan it's been great guys thank you so much for watching francisco and javier this was great thank you jorge So I love, 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 love this view. It's so peaceful. Jamie Ro Ooh, Rugles, that's difficult to say. So yay, thank you. Love you, thank you so much, guys. So thank you. Let's try to make a little zoom in. It looks like a painting, so gorgeous. Okay, my friends, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Besos, everybody. Bye-bye.